Good afternoon, I'm Ed Poswoli, president of Trip Scott, and today we're honored to have the Vice Mayor of Brower County, Marty Kerr. Marty, welcome. Thank you, Ed, and I'm very honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, Marty, let's talk a little bit about, currently you're on the County Commission as Vice Mayor, and I know there's a lot of activity, but specifically, uh, what's going on with the port and the airport? A lot of activity there. Sure, well, I'll tell you, you know, it's incredible to represent Brower County on the County Commission. We are a county that is massive. We have uh, more people than 12 states, the District of Columbia, and all U.S. territories except Puerto Rico. And somebody told me recently, I haven't verified this, that more than 70 countries sent people to the Olympics that have less people than Broward County. And when you look at our county, we're also incredibly diverse. We're pretty much a snapshot of America. Uh, if you look at America, that's what Broward County looks like. And in Broward, our two biggest economic engines that the county commission has a big say over are our port and our airport. Right. And so we're constantly working to try to improve both of those because you know we our economy is built on tourism and and those are pretty much our lifeblood. Right. And so what are some of the improvements and things that the county commission is doing at the port and the airport? Sure. Well, the airport is very interesting. I like to use uh, Denver's airport as a good example. If you fly into Denver, their airport's on the outskirts of Denver, and they have all this open space around them. So they can get as big as they possibly want and they can grow. Well, we don't really have that in our county. No. We're pretty much landlocked. And so people that are very, very smart, much smarter than me, are constantly trying to figure out ways to make our airport continuously compete with all of the other big air international airports in the country. And they have to do that in a confined space and they do a great job. And so, for example, we built a very big new runway yep. where we have more planes and bigger planes coming in. Uh, we are partnering up in a public-private partnership with Southwest Airlines where we're uh, building five new gates at Terminal 1, which just next year alone will bring another million passengers into our county. Wow. And one other thing that I think is neat is we try to also um, uh, cater to the culture of the people coming in. So Terminal 4 is a good example. That's a big international terminal. And a lot of the folks coming in come in from the Caribbean. So if you go into that terminal, you'll see the restaurants. They're not Chili's or our normal restaurants. They're restaurants that cater to the culture of the people coming in. Because when people are trying to decide where to book a ticket, I want them to say, we're coming to Fort Lauderdale and we're not going to Miami or Palm Beach County or anywhere else. And so that's very exciting about our airport. And then our port is also incredibly exciting. And I know that you spend a lot of time working on our, on yeah, our port. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of folks don't know this, but we are the second largest uh, multi-day cruise port terminal in the world. Wow. Unfortunately, Miami-Dade is first. We have to take that business from them, and we're competing. And we, after 18 years, the federal government unfortunately moves somewhat slow at times. Uh, after 18 years, it looks like we're finally going to get the approval to deepen and widen our port which is very, very important because right now you have lots of very mega big ships and they pass uh, Port Everglades by because they're afraid to scrape the bottom. They right. won't come here they and they go elsewhere. Right. And so now with the approval to deepen our port, to widen our port within the next couple of years, we'll be able to handle those ships. And it's a good time to do it because the Panama Canal is getting bigger where you have mega ships coming through there. And I want them to come right to Port Everglades and go nowhere else because it is very important for our local But well, we have economy. to make sure we can accommodate those big those big ships. Yes, we do. Let me switch gears a little bit. Uh, there's a, you sponsored a proposed ordinance called the Yellow Dot Program. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. I will. The Yellow Dot Program is a very neat program. Last year, the Florida legislature, and actually one of my best friends, he's a state senator named Joe Abruzzo, was the sponsor. Sure. Uh, they passed a bipartisan bill that allowed counties to, if they want to, adopt what's called the Yellow Dot Program. And let me explain what that does. Right now, let's say somebody is in a terrible accident and first responders get to the scene and they get to the scene and the people are unconscious in the car. Well, unfortunately, the first responders don't know what uh, the medical conditions are of the folks in there. They don't have information. So they put them on a stretcher, they rush them to the hospital, and hopefully they're able to get there to provide them care. Well, what the Yellow Dot program does, it anybody who wants to participate, it's free to the public. What they will get is a little yellow decal and a little yellow folder. And they put the yellow decal on the back of their car. And in the yellow folder, they put certain pertinent medical information. And that's not medical information where people can steal your identity, but it's your blood type, for example, the hospital that you would like to go to, uh, other information that, that can help first responders uh, have information that they can provide treatment to people right on the scene. How, do, how does the, the, the emergency services access that information from the scene? What they're able to do is the yellow, little yellow folder is put in the glove box. I see. And uh, right now, uh, before this bill was passed, it would be uh, illegal for them to go into the glove box to search it to try to get this. If they have, if they see the yellow decal there, they'll know that under the law they're permitted to go in there, and that's what they'll be looking for. They'll pull it out, and they'll be able to provide uh, treatment to those folks. And it could mean the difference between life and death. 
It could, it could. And what's really exciting, it also looks like the Yellow Dot program is likely gonna also be in, in it's already implemented in Palm Beach County. I believe Miami-Dade County uh, may also approve it as well. And so you have an area as big as South Florida uh, that is uh, likely gonna be able to have this life-saving measure. And I think it's gonna be wonderful Great for idea. South Florida. Great idea. Thank you. Let me skip ahead. Um, you know, we're at Trip Scott's a law firm and there are a lot of law firms watching that courthouse come out of the ground. Give us a little update on that. You know, we are, you know, one of the biggest and I think most important counties in the entire nation. And with a brand new courthouse, I think it's going to make the taxpayers of Broward County very, very proud that they have this new courthouse that they can utilize. And it's it's coming along very quickly. I believe uh, next year the, the judges are all moving in. So we're close sometime next summer. Sometime next summer, which would, would be great. Skip ahead. One of the things around the port and the airport is uh, the county pursuing some sort of convention center hotel. Uh, what's the status of that, Marty? Well, I'll tell you, that's, the convention center hotel is a big priority of the current county commission. Every single county commissioner is looking at this as almost uh, like a legacy vote, something that we know is very important for our community. Uh, as I said before, we are a county built on tourism. We People have jobs here because people come here and spend their money. And the one, one thing that we're missing is a convention center hotel. Every single year we lose a ton of conventions elsewhere because we don't have this hotel. And what I want is for these conventions, whether it's a Harley Davidson convention or an eye doctor convention, doesn't matter what it is, I want them to make Broward County their destination. And hopefully within a couple years, we'll have the hotel built uh, and hopefully it'll be in a public private partnership or we can partner with the private industry. And I think that would make our county very proud. And at the end of the day, would create a whole lot of jobs in Broward County based on uh, the tourism that it would generate. And the location we're talking about is where the convention center is now? It is. It's the convention, right where the convention center is, pretty much on port property. And uh, around that property, it's actually a big property. Part right. of it is owned by the county, and other part of it is uh, privately owned. And uh, we all seem to be in agreement that the best way to make this work is to utilize the entire property. So uh, not only are we out there uh, seeking uh, uh, partnerships with hoteliers and hotel chains, we're also working with the private owners there to utilize their property as well, because if we can make the entire property work, along with Fort Lauderdale as well, where it is located, this would be, I think, an incredible project for our county. So I'm excited about it. That would be interesting. That really would be interesting. Good luck with that. Oh, thank you. Now, Marty, let me switch over on a personal note. Sure. Um, you're vice mayor now. You'll be mayor next year, uh, you know, unless something funky happens. But something is sort of a brew with you. Uh, you're considering or have announced to run for property appraiser of Broward County. I have. I'm very excited about it. You know, our current property appraiser, Lori Parrish, is an incredible person. She's a dear friend. She's been in public office now for 31 or 32 years. And uh, after her long service, she's decided to retire. And I'm very proud that she's endorsed me to, to run for property appraiser. And, you know, I announced last month we've been hitting the ground running. And if uh, the people of our county... Uh, give me the honor of serving them, I think I can make them very, very proud. What are some of the things you want to see from the property appraiser's office? Well, I'll tell you, Lori has done, Lori Parrish has done a great job with her office. Uh, she took over in 2004 and she's been there since. And I believe it is the best run office in the county when it comes to customer service. And that's something that I would definitely continue and, and try to expand on it. Another thing that she's done, I think she has some of the most accurate assessments of both commercial and residential property in the state. And the reason she does that is because she has utilized what dollars she has to really invest in technology. And I'd like to continue on that as well. And I uh, just hope that the people of our county really give me the opportunity to serve them in that capacity. Well, Marty, that, and I, I got to tell you, thank you from all of us in Broward County for your public service. I know that from the state legislature to the county commission to now being vice mayor and hopefully soon to be property appraiser, I want to thank you on behalf of everybody here at Trip Scott. Oh, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you. This is wonderful. Thank you for having me.